All right. For people who might think that Greg is just ragging on Matt Patricia or he's just he's got some kind of bias or he's got some ulterior motive. Let's go to somebody outside of Greg Bedard. And Greg mentioned Dan Orlovsky when you're wondering what's wrong with this offense. And there's there's a tweet exchange between Orlovsky and, and DJ Bean. And here's what Orlovsky tweets first. If anyone tells you it's Mac Jones's issue in New England, they're out of their freaking minds. The offense has completely regressed this player, and it's awful. Uh, Bean then jumps in and tweets at Orlovsky, wrong. He isn't the problem, but he hasn't been very good. And Orlovsky responds to that, how can a QB be good when the playbook stinks, the play calls stink, the offensive line can't protect, the timing is awful, the spacing is poor, and no one wins in their routes. Greg, the floor is yours. Okay, so... Dan knows a lot more about this stuff than I do. Um, and, you know, what I see is just there's a complete disconnect in the passing game. And, and, and what I and it's led to the point where, you know, there are some plays. There was a stretch in the third and fourth quarter where I, I had. So for people. Who, so I had Mac Jones as three plus plays, seven minus plays in this game. So he wasn't good. Um, I actually, I, I had a fourth, the touchdown pass to Stevenson. I ended up taking it away. I might revisit that. Um, I thought it was a good pass in a, t- in a tight spot. And uh, so w- we might revisit that. But anyways, he was not good in this game. And a lot of the issues that I had in the second half, when I had him in the second half, I had him one plus play. Um, it was actually the throw behind, quote unquote, behind Jacoby Myers that everybody's like, oh, yeah. that wasn't a good pass. Actually, on film, and I don't know this, this is my guess, that Mac was right, that Jacoby Myers just should have turned around and just sat in the zone, and that's where Mac threw the ball, except Jacoby kept going to the sideline, and that's why it was, quote-unquote, behind him. I think Mac saw it right, Jacoby saw it wrong, but it ended up working out. So, you know, good throw from um, from Mac, because if he would have let him, and even Archuleta said this on the telecast, it would have been picked off. There was a there was a cornerback coming underneath, and that's why Mac sort of wanted him to stay there. And Jacoby did a nice job adjusting. So in the end, it worked out for everybody. So both of them get pluses on that play. But there were a bunch of plays where, you know, Mac like there was a throw that he had to Tyquan Thornton, um, and it was in the red zone. In the third quarter, I think it was their second drive. It was after the, it was after the Jacoby Myers fumble. Um, he had Tyquan Thornton one on one, which I didn't. I don't mind the decision. The throw wasn't good. He got a minus on that play. He didn't really give Thornton a chance. But there was a better play, Hunter Henry in the right seam off of sort of the RPO fake, where it's like, okay, boom, go right to Hunter. But he's not looking there. And and this is puzzling to me. And you see, and I saw this over and over in this game, where you're just like. How come Max not looking over there? How come he's looking over here? And the, I never had those questions last year with Mac Jones. There were never times where I'm just like, well, he saw this wrong or his eyes are in the wrong place. And so that leads me back to the construct of the offense. And I think this is what Orlovsky's getting at. I mean, there's just a lot of things that are disjointed. Like they'll they'll have really deep routes. And but Max and the shotgun only in a two step drop. And wh- what's he to get those routes to develop? What's he supposed to do? Stand there for four seconds and then you see some, yeah. some of panic. Like if you have deep routes, then a good um, then a good uh, a good coordinator says, OK, we, we want to hit these deep routes. Well, OK, then you script it under center play action, a seven step drop. By the time the quarterback gets to his drop. Now the guys are down the field. Now he can make choices. Like, and then the other thing is, is like, there's not, there's no levels to the offense. Like usually with Josh McDaniels, when he would call plays like on the same side of the field, or at least in the general area where the quarterback is looking, you would have a deep option an intermediate option. And then sort of an outlet in this offense, it's either all or nothing. Like there's no levels to the offense. And then when you talk about checkdowns, and I know Archuleta must have mentioned checkdowns a couple times, about 10 times in that game about getting quicker to the checkdowns. Okay, that's fine. But you also have to take into account that, number one, a lot of the checkdowns are being used on chips on the end first. So 
it's tough to see whether they're going to be open and they get open very late. And but the bigger thing to me is like on that Tyquan Thornton play. So he had Henry, he has Thornton, and then there's an outlet, but it's all the way on the other side of the field. So as a quarterback, Matt Patricia, because he, he doesn't think about it as a quarterback, he thinks about it as a defensive coordinator. As a quarterback, you're like, okay, really, my option number one is Hunter Henry. Okay, I don't like that. Then I'm coming back. I'm moving my shoulders to the left sideline. Now I'm going to look at number two. Then, no, okay, I don't have that. Where's my outlet? It's all the way freaking over here. <laughs> like, it doesn't make any sense when you watch it on paper. It's just a disjointed freaking mess that you're like, no wonder the quarterback doesn't have any any clue. And you just, you know, you compare it to Zappy, and it was different because, you know, Patricia was confined. He knew Zappy couldn't do a lot. So it was like, all right, we're going under center. Play action. This is your read or this is your read. And it was very simple. Like, this is just like, it's like, all right, here you go, Mac. Like, we're just going to put you in the shotgun. You might do this stupid RPO read, which doesn't do anything at the NFL level. This isn't Alabama anymore. It doesn't freeze anybody. Nobody's fooled because you're not running with the ball. Uh, you know, it's not like you're Lamar Jackson back there or anything. And then we're running all these deep routes and all these guys are all over the field, which, oh, we want to spread the defense out. But like now you need to figure it out behind a line that can't protect you. Like this is what I see on film a vast majority of the time. And I just I just don't get it. And it just needs to be completely revamped during the bye week and they need to really sort of confine everything and constrict everything going forward or else it's just going to continue to be like this. When Mac Jones was drafted, we talked about his processing ability, his football intelligence, his anticipation, his accuracy, his pocket manipulation and movement. And through the first year of his NFL career, all of that was proven true. Check, 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 check. Now we move into a second season and we start to see that regression and we see the Mac Jones that was there last season and was there at Alabama and was praised throughout the draft process to the point where Kyle Shanahan, if you believe the reports, he wanted to draft Mac at three and the Niners people who, whether it was Jed York or, or Lynch or both uh, kind of talked him out of it and led him to Trey Lance. All of that is starting to regress. And folks, sometimes you just think with common sense. I know in this world where we all yell at each other, uh, by the way, happy election day, uh, mm -hmm. in this world where we all yell at each other and we all, we all want to blame this, this person, that person. Do you think Mac Jones woke up in training camp and just forgot all of the things he was strong at? Do you think he woke up and just forgot how to read defenses do you think he just woke up and lost his accuracy overnight in his early 20s do you think this guy just forgot how to play football what I see and what Greg is telling you and what Dan Orlovsky is, is telling you this is a quarterback that we're not saying he's playing great he played better last week than people thought he didn't play well this week but there are reasons for that and Mac looks like a guy who's thinking through everything and he looks like a guy who doesn't trust anything around him, doesn't know what to expect, doesn't, doesn't know if he's going to get hammered on any given play because his own line stinks, doesn't know what his offensive coordinator is doing and why he's doing it. He knows more about offense than his offensive coordinator. That should never be, that should never be the thing unless you're like Brady playing for 25 years. Like, it's absurd. And we talked about this in the offseason. And, and our, number one, our number one concern was that they would – they would cause a regression from Mac Jones. We, I mean, this was predictable. We talked about it before the season kicked off because of what they did, because of the Joe Judge, Matt Patricia, too many jobs, too few people, the, the changings, the tweaks of the offense, all the stuff we went through. That's why we went through it. And now here we are, fortunately at five and four because the defense is playing well and Nick Folk is a football god. Other than that, what, what, are, we, what are we doing here? And, and you're seeing it. The, the worst thing that I said, you know, I said the worst thing that can happen for this football team. I don't even care about the record as much as I care about Mac Jones and his progression. You drafted him 15th in the draft. He's your franchise quarterback. He should be your franchise quarterback for the next 15 years. And if you screw that up, then you screw everything up. And what we're seeing right now is a bad handling of a young quarterback. 
and having a guy in charge of an offense that could not find his ass with two hands and a flashlight at night. That's what we're seeing right now. And in, until they do some changes, it's going to remain that way. And guess what? Mac ain't going to get better, folks. He's not going to improve when it's a complete bleep show around him.